Okay, so Milenko is an electrical engineering student. He's working in vision space technology on ground data systems. And in his free time, he works on CubeSats communication systems and ground station of the university group in Technical University of Darmstadt uh, Space Technology. So in his talk, Milenko will show how you can easily upgrade your ground station for live data delivery. Please thank our speaker. Thank you. So my name is, again, Milenko Starczyk. I work at Vision Space Technologies, and I present an open source implementation of the Spacelink extension services in Python today. So first of all, um, the question is, why, why have we done this? So currently, there's no live data for the amateur community, for example, using the Satnox network. And it's also difficult to use other ground station equipment um, than just these RTL SDR sticks that Satnox is using. And there are only solutions you can buy uh, to solve this problem. So first of all, what are the SLE services? So SLE is a set of standards that is defined by the CCSDS, which is a global organization where all the major space agencies like ESA, NASA, JAXA, and so on are working together on standards um, to make their ground stations and spacecraft um, interoperable. So usually a spacecraft communicates with a ground station and with this uh, set of protocols, um, this is extended to the user in the mission control center. So before we started the project, we defined some requirements. Uh, we wanted to have it free and open source for everyone and it should be easily integratable with ground station equipment that is commonly around. And we also wanted convenient configuration because, because this can be really a mess. So here is our application scenario. Um, we have a ground station manager, we have a ground station, and we have a spacecraft operator. So before a pass, uh, so before a satellite passes the ground station, the ground station manager schedules the pass on the ground station using our REST API. Then, just before the satellite passes, the spacecraft operator uses its mission control system and the SLE user to connect to the SLE provider. And then, during the pass, he can get telemetry and also send uh, telecommands. So, this is how it looks like when you run it on the terminal. Um, it's just a simple script. We have three ports open. Um, one is our REST API. The next is the implementation of the SLE protocol where clients can connect. And um, then we have a protocol to interface with the ground station hardware. And it says it's running. So afterwards, our ground station manager can use the REST API to configure manually or automate it the ground station. So this is with a Jupyter notebook, for example. Um, and we see some configuration that was done, and it's all good. So next up um, is our middleware. This is used to use different kinds of ground station. So we have an implementation for GNU radio. So you can use your Satnox station, for example, with a UDP port that is already existing. Or you can also use professional ground station equipment like a Cortex modem, uh, which is used in more professional ground stations usually. And then on the other side, we have a JSON-based protocol that connects to our SLE provider implementation. So to start this, you can configure it. For example, when you use the AX25 decoder, you can have good frames and bad frames. So we have two ports open. You can give your antenna a name or an ID and start it. So this is what it looks like when you just run the example script that is delivered with the SLE provider. And then afterwards, your user can connect. So there are already different user implementations out there. This is why we choose to do a provider implementation because there was no open source provider implementation. So we have from Artur, who is also here, the LibreCube uh, Python SLE user. We have NASA AIT, which is the AMOS instrumentation toolkit. This is part of a bigger NASA toolkit of open source and it's a full mission control system. So you can use it to control a satellite with it. And it's also in active development, so we are in contact with them, and it's working together. 
You can also use yet another mission control system from Space Application Services. They also have an SLE user integrated, so there's a plugin. What you can also use, if you have access to this, are the uh, uh, users from uh, ESA or, for example, NASA. So what is currently used in operations for each ESA satellite can also be used with a CubeSat now. So the tool that they use is SCOS 2000 currently, and there is a new version upcoming um, that will also work with our solution. And this was also tested. So now for sake of simplicity, we used Arthur's client, which is just a command line tool, and connected. And part of the protocol is a heartbeat mechanism, so you can see that your connection is always alive. This is what it looks like on the provider side. So previously we started it, we see our ports open and that it's running. We connected our baseband equipment and now our client is connected. So to test it, uh, we don't have access to live data. Um, so you can find on the LibreSpace community uh, now flowgraphs for using the recorded files, the audio files that the Satnox network is generating and always uploading um, and can test uh, the software with it. So in the end we have a UDP message sync that connects to our middleware. So on the SLE user side you can now see um, also annotational information, so we have a timestamp for each frame, uh, we have the antenna ID that we configured, and we have also some indication of the data link quality. So if the previous frame was also good, and uh, yeah, you can choose if you want to receive just good frames, just bad frames, or a mix of them. So all of this was uh, already tested, thanks to Cory, <laughs> who uploaded um, our software to his uh, Satnox ground station and installed it. Um, maybe after the talk, he can tell us about his experience. So um, this is from the Satnox DB, the first frame that was actually transmitted live uh, from a Satnox, Satnox network station um, with our SLE provider implementation. So now just a short summary. So um, it works with CubeSats, but also with commercial satellites. So we used also GNURADIO with a bigger ground station we have available um, to receive Proba 1 and Proba 2, which are ESA satellites. And we can also receive their telemetry data, which is one megabit per second. So it's not just working for CubeSats, you can also use it for uh, bigger satellites. And for this, we also integrated it with the ground station equipment there. And so you can now use not just software-defined radio, but also other tools. So what it will be next up, we did a short evaluation of the security, because this is always a concern. And also about the performance, because um, we can now work with S-band data, but we want to go up to X-band. And um, what is also included in the protocol is a telecommand uplink. Um, this has not been implemented yet, but it's part of the protocol and can be implemented. So, of course, with this come some legal problems that we can discuss, but I think we can solve this issue um, with our implementation. Um, what we also want to try is to test it with the more SATNOC stations and also test it um, with the CubeSat um, mission control system for live mission. So, thank you for your attention. And uh, I can just recommend you to try it out. Thank you very much, Milinko. So, are there any questions from the audience? Well, I will start with a question then. Uh, are there any legal issues that you have to face like when sending commands to some spacecraft or something like that? And it's the, is it something that affects uh, the system that you presented? Yeah, so this can be um, 
configured, so you can have, for each pass, you can configure if it's just allowed to receive or to also to send. So you can have different users and agree with them. For example, inside a national border, there are usually different regulations. So when you're inside just one, one country, it's usually easier. So um, we think we can, with this point-to-point -point architecture, we can solve the problem. <laughs> okay, so um, still, why should I use it? I mean, if I imagine I have a Setnox station and now you have this software, what does it bring me? Why should I install this? Because it makes Setnox really usable for operators of satellites, because from now, it's just like after the pass, the telemetry is uploaded, but if you really want to operate a satellite, you want your data now and not somewhere in the future. Because of course, when something happened, you can look it up a few days later. But um, when you really go into operations, you want your data now and not some point in the future. So what you're saying is that the current situation is that if I have, if I have a Sutnox station, that this data that I record there gets transferred to a central server, Sutnox DB, right? And then later on, I can retrieve this data. And with this SLE provider, you would have the capability to do a live streaming of your data. So whatever station you're using in the Sutnox network um, that has this SLE provider, uh, theoretically, you could get live data then from there. Um, but this then requires you now to have a central server. Yeah. Because, because it's, it's all about centralization, that you have one point connecting to many stations and then the clients connecting to this point. So did you think about this aspect of the server, central server? Yeah, so you can also use like a central management API because we have this management API for scheduling passes. This can be do, done point to point, but it could be also done by the network. Who's interested in doing that? <laughs> you need more uh, testers, right? Yeah. So I see four hands, that's, that's quite good already. Ah, five. <laughs> I'd, I'd, be, I'd be interested to try it, but um, I also have a question. So if you have um, a satellite pass over Europe, there are of course multiple Satnox stations that can receive uh, the satellite. So does um, your software allow for multiple ground stations to provide your data at the same time? Yeah, so this is what is done usually also in a like, space agency. Um, so you can have multiple connections at the same time, not just on the ground station, but also on the mission control system because you usually have like a backup link when one link fails. Uh, hi. 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 Thank you for your presentation. That was really nice. Uh, I just have one question. Uh, you, you are covering on the ground stations where you want to upload your software uh, or firmware. Uh, can this uh, be already done not on the ground station but on the space segment? Can you upload this uh, thing on a microcontrollers over the satellite and work with this same software? No, it's just a software for a ground data system. So it's a ground data system model. Of course, you could use, for example, um, also CCSDS standards on the spacecraft. Yes, with exactly. It. But um, this is not what we implemented. This is like part of these CCSDS framework mm -hmm. that can be used to together, for example, with space packets or other stuff. But um, this is just a ground solution. And did you think uh, of this maybe in in the coming uh, near future? Would you want to go into that direction with this? So currently we are focusing on ground systems, but could be something for the future. All right, thank you. Uh, one more question from my side. What's the motivation of your company to open source uh, this thing? Can you expand a little bit more on that? Yeah, so... Um, 
the, the idea was to really reach out and give something back to the community because on, on one side we are also using a lot of open source tools and also using data that is openly available to test things. And the other thing is that, yeah, we want to reach out and yeah, that's basically it. Just uh, an additional uh, follow-up from that, basically. So, if you can talk a bit, if you want, <laughs> around your sustainability model and the revenue model for open source for you, that would be nice. So, currently, honestly, there is no revenue model. So, I have to say it like this, it uh, started as a small project uh, from me and uh, Fabian, who's also there, so we were students, and I was doing my bachelor thesis on this. So, it was, yeah, just a small project in the beginning but we will see where it evolves now. So, but it is open source and it will stay open source. So it's uh, with the AGPL license and the core module is MIT licensed. So, yeah, I mean, we cannot, from now it's out. <laughs> yes, thank you for your presentation. So, as far as I understand, this is more like a tunnel between two points. So between your mission control software and the remote ground station. What about the hassle happening on the ground station? It's kind of unfortunate fact that each satellite is using a little bit different modem software. Some, some people are using sound modem, some people are using the actual hardware, some people are using the new radio based software. How about automating the switching between different modem software and satellite operation modes? So you mean modems on the satellite or on the ground uh, station? On the ground station, so what is required to transmit the packets to the satellite and receive? Yeah, so this is why we have this uh, middleware architecture so you can use what is already um, on the repository as a blueprint for your own ground station hardware. So um, there are plans for the, for example, the GOM space, that they have a ground station modem um, that we want to integrate and also amateur equipment uh, for AX25 is out there uh, that we want to integrate. So yeah, this is why we choose this middleware approach and not just have one fixed endpoint on the uh, baseband equipment side. Yeah, you can just uh, start a different middleware. You can also have multiple running, so it's not just uh, one. You can also have like 10 different modems in your ground station, start 10 different implementations of this middleware, and yeah, then it's working. There is time for one question more, if you like. Okay, so thank you very much.